Uh, apologies in advance. I'm not much of a talker, so if things kind of sound monotone, uh, sorry, I'm, I just, I'm not a talker. Uh, I basically just wanted to go do a little bit of an overview on the Armitan Tadpole a bit. Uh, parts, uh, some of its features, things of, that, things of that nature. I guess first and foremost, uh, it sets release uh, within like three to four weeks. Um, still no release date yet. Uh, on top of that, still no set price. Although I can tell you that it's going to have two price points. One's going to be a non-warrantied version, and then another one's going to be a warrantied version. Um, so right off the bat, uh, the way that they're going to differentiate that is with a serial number. If you look at the top of the screen, you got it, I guess, laser etched in there. Yeah, somehow they have it in there. Um, and that's basically just going to, you know, mark how Armitan knows the, the frame is warranty or not. Um, you can, I mean, if you're, if you're a safety nut, you can flip the entire plate around and have it on the inside. That way it's safe from damage. But, I mean, honestly, when do you ever receive damage like that, uh, you know, in that position? So I just, I put, I put it face down because it, it looks cool. It's easier to show you guys, too. Um, <clears throat> as far as damage is concerned, I mean, the little nick uh, on the anodization on the aluminum is probably the worst of it on the metal. Um, I do have probably some, probably some delamination somewhere to be seen, like, on the edges of the carbon, barely. I fly mostly over, like, concrete and pavement and such so that's probably the extent of it and honestly if you're flying like 2s uh, I really don't see this thing breaking uh, really you'd have to be flying 3s like like cracking the whip full throttle into something for you to probably break this so if you plan on like flying like 2s I would just not even get the warranty version honestly I mean I've dropped this thing from uh, 12 feet straight, you know, just a, just a free fall, 12 feet on the ground, on the pavement, uh, no problemo. Uh, I got this thing stuck in a tree. Uh, I threw a big stick at it to get it out, and it launched it like 30 feet in the air in like a parabolic, parabolic curve, and then hit the pavement. Uh, came out fine. Probably a saving grace was probably landing on the pavement like this, like on the ends of the props. Those were a little bent afterwards, but other than that, uh, unscathed, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I leave that up to you on your uh, choice of getting the warranty version or not. Um, now, if you know if you know for certain you're going to be flying some dangerous spots or you're going to be ripping on three S, like really going fast, yeah, get that get get that warranty. That way. You know, you can just get a free replacement. Screw it. Um, now, as far as, like, my motor's choice... <coughs> excuse me. I went with the 1103-8000KV. Uh, I was more or less trying to mimic what the Emax, what Tiny Hawk Freestyle has. I believe it has, like, 7500KV motors. Um, I couldn't find any motors in that KV. They're probably out now. Who, who do I know? What do I know? Um, so I was more or less just trying to target towards that because a lot of people had good flying experience with the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. Um, and matter of fact, uh, speaking of that, um, I started out flying Emu Flight uh, on the Mamba, Dayton Mamba F11, F411 Nano, I think that's the stack. And uh, I just could not get the thing tuned just right. It flew all right, like my first flight, and then, and then I and then I really started to notice like the flaws in my tune, like really bad prop wash, um, fluttering, and I mean I've tuned it six ways to Sunday, and I even got some help from the uh, Emu Flight guys on their on their Discord, and they helped, but I don't know, I just. I tried practically everything. I, and mind you, I'm a terrible tuner. 
Uh, it's probably more on me rather than the firmware. Uh, I, I just I just couldn't get it right. So I, I flashed it to the uh, like Beta Flight 4.0 or 4.1. I have to go back and look. And uh, I effectively just copied the PIDs from the Emacs uh, Tiny Hawk Freestyle, um, left the filters alone, and it flies so much better. No prop wash. Uh, still need to tweak it a little bit uh, just to get things a little more dialed in, but compared to what I had with the Emu Flight firmware, it means just me just fumbling around in my own ignorance. Uh, it's just so much better. Um, those with the keen eye probably recognize that the stack is upside down. Um, no rhyme or reason why I have that have it that way. Um, that's just that's just how I ended up doing it. Um, it does make it easier to solder the uh, uh, the motor leads though to the ESC. We'll say it was cooling, yeah, because now the ESC is up top. Now it's getting better cooling. Let's go with that. Um, <laughs> Probably your camera of choice is going to be the Runcam Racer Nano. I think I think this thing can only take nano cams. I think a mic like a micro is not fitting in that. So even if you wanted to use like an HD board, uh, like a like a turtle or a split, you're probably out of luck. Um, now I I believe there's like a Whoop specific HD board, and I think that uses a nano camera maybe. So you might be able to get away with that because, and image on the screen now, there's going to be, the, the production model will have a square bracket that'll mount to these two holes here. And that's going to provide uh, a mounting solution for whoop AOI, a, AIO boards. Um, so you might be able to get away with the whoop uh, AIO board and a um, HD board, and that way that that'll be your way to get HD. I think. Um, I'm not sure about the HD part, but yes, on the what part? That's what that bracket's for. That's gonna look a little wonky because you're gonna have like a diamond kind of shape with that board uh, in there. But hey, options. People people wanted it, so Armitan's listening. Um, Highly recommend getting like a 400 milliwatt VTX. Uh, my very first video on this, the uh, sneak peek video, was only on 25 milliwatts. And, you know, you can see the static between going from the front of the my yard to the back of the yard. And then I'll have some video now where I'm like power looping the house. <clears throat> and that's on 400 milliwatts. And like the video is like noise. Um, I just have no crossfire on this. Um, the antenna solution is just a little bit wonky, so I just went with an RXSR. Um, you know, it fits nice. I can kind of do like this orientation for the for the antenna. It's not the best, obviously, but you know, I'm not I'm not long range in the thing, you know, and it it's it's fine for what it is. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, so I'm using the HQ 65 millimeter props, two and a half inch props. Um, I haven't tried any tri-blades. I imagine they're going to have better grip. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the bi-blades. They sound nice. Um, you can do certain tricks. It makes like a, a really cool, neat noise. Uh, yeah. They feel nice. Uh, sounds nice. I'm satisfied with it. Uh, speaking of satisfaction, uh, I've been flying with the GNB uh, 652S's. Um, <clears throat> I did fly a 453S, which is uh, pretty much on par with a 652S as far as watt hours are concerned. Um, I really would not go any higher than a 453S or a 652S. I wouldn't go any higher. I kind of feel like you're in the realm of diminishing returns as far as, you know, the extra bit of milliamp hours or watt hours um, versus like the extra weight that you're gaining. I just don't think that's worth it. I think this is like your absolute maximum as far as the 2S is concerned. Same goes for the 4S or the, the, the 3S um, 450. Um, I think the Mama Stack does 4S. Don't quote me on that. You'll have to look that up. So I, I mean, if you want to have at it, <laughs> go, that's all you. Um, I recommend like this form factor battery where it's, you know, 
you know, a bit on the, you know, thin and long side. That's what she said. Because uh, it fits perfectly with the thin body of the turtle. Come on, get out of the way, stupid battery leap. I mean, it, it is the perfect fit, you know, wise and lengthwise. Like, this is like the perfect battery for it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I recommend these. GMB or probably something similar. I think the, I think Tattoo has something uh, in, in, you know, in this million power range, but it's like a little bit on the heavier side and a little less. I think it's like a 500 milliamp hour and it weighs exactly the same as a 650. I don't know if they've just underrated it or they, or it's just unnecessarily heavy. I don't know. GMBs seem to do the trick and whatever. Um, um, as far as like mounting your battery, I recommend getting like the Pyrodrone battery straps, like the little itty bitty ones. I think they're like 110 millimeters or some such. Um, you can go with like a, uh, a rubber band solution that way you can save on weight. Uh, honestly, I think 1.5 grams, you know, two straps, three grams, big deal. I don't think it's that much of a, uh, you know, of a, you know, of a weight killer. Um, Armitian is actually coming up with their own version. So if like these are out of stock, uh, or your shipping situations, you know, just doesn't line up with coming out of, you know, California. Armortain will have these for sale. I think probably at the same time this is out for sale. So not to worry. Uh, whether you want to use like these or the Armortain version or just rubber bands, it's all up to you. I said it was pretty neat to toss out there. Uh, speaking of weight, um, the all up weight of this thing is like 89 grams. I'll, I'll have the correct number up. I, I, I just don't have it on hand. Um, I also have the the normal weight with no you know nothing no battery on it. Um, I'll have that up on the screen as well. Um, and honestly, you really don't want to go past like ninety grams anyways, or maybe even ninety five grams. You start to go past that, and you're like in the now you're in the realm of diminishing returns. Uh, you go past that, you're you're hurting the performance of the quad. Um, it's it's not gonna fly as well as it could. Uh, honestly, I feel like where it's at, uh, weight wise is similarly the same, uh, for like a five inch at like 600 grams, maybe even a little less than that, maybe like 580. I think that's, I think where this is at is where I am. So yeah, I think that's about all that I can cover. Um, as far as the lack of an HD solution, <clears throat> I kind of see this as just a as a flyer's frame, you know, less less of a, a YouTuber's frame. Um, kind of the reason why I haven't posted a lot of videos lately is I've been flying the hell out of this thing, and I've spent quite a bit of time not hitting the DVR button even. Uh, I've just been busy just flying and having fun, not worrying about, H, you know, uh, indie filters or, like, set-piece tricks or sweet, sweet sweet dives I got to do and show. I've just been flying the thing. Like, not even worried about whatever uh, to capture, just having fun flying. Uh, and I, I feel like this frame, like, underscores that by, well, forcing you to do that because uh, you're not worried, you, know, you can't even fit an HD, as far as I can tell, you can't fit an HD board in here. So it forces you to just have fun flying the damn thing. Uh, not worrying about anything, like you know, worrying about anything else, and with that, I I don't really have any complaints or regrets that I can't fly HD. Just been having fun flying it. So I mean, if you absolutely must have an HD solution and like a whoop HD board, still can't cut it. Maybe it's not for you. I don't know. I would still give it a chance because you know it it moves your focus from capturing video to just flying and having fun and that's really at the end of the day what it's all about um, at least at least at least to me uh, I don't know um, tell me your thoughts opinions and all that stuff I think I've pretty much covered it all uh, and again sorry for my monotonous voice uh, again I, I'm a terrible social person just in general let alone actually <clears throat> talking in videos and stuff that's why I don't vlog I don't do anything interesting. I don't have really anything interesting to say for the most part. So yeah.
Uh, so I'm sorry for that. But um, yeah, uh, if you're watching this far along, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, smash that like button, I guess. Uh, hit the bell icon so you can watch everything, whatever. Uh, more flight stuff to come. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one. I got